Hey guys, Fabamahart here. This is going to be part two for the knife I forged on the summer solstice. So this is a piece of oak I'm splitting down right here. This is the same oak that I got for the Farrier's Rasp knife. I'm sawing it down to get to the center of the heartwood so that I have the, the cleanest wood. It's free of any uh, stains or cracks, that kind of thing. And so since I made the tang of the knife so narrow, I decided to burn the tang into my handle material. That's why I left it so uh, big right here. And uh, it was a lot more difficult than I uh, initially expected. And the very first handle I attempted, uh, I was pushing so hard on the knife that the end of the tang cooled down, but the center was still hot. So as I was pushing, it wasn't actually going deeper into the wood. The tang actually bulged out and it blew out the side of the uh, wood that I was going to use for the handle. So for this piece, I left it extra thick. And then this is just a uh, some scrap steel rod that I'm using to kind of burn a pilot hole in before using the actual knife tank to do the final fit. Overall, it was a pretty uh, difficult process going back and forth trying to heat the material up and burn it in. So uh, honestly, was not a big fan of that method. But it's supposedly a historically accurate method of uh, making Viking knives, so I decided to give it a shot. And so here's the quench. You can see my old oil uh, bubbling there. Knife is hot enough. Kind of messed it up there a little bit. But end result was a hardened knife, so that's all that counts. So I cleaned up the, uh, the blade with vinegar and then uh, polished it on my work sharp grinder and then uh, tempered it. So tempered it in the oven, set it at uh, 375 degrees, left it there an hour, did that a total of uh, three times, letting it cool in between. And so while I was doing that, I started working on the uh, handle. So I have the hole already burned through there, and I'm just uh, whittling it down with my CRKT burler axe, kind of using it as a crafting hatchet here. Uh, and it worked good for this, I, I liked using it. It takes a good edge. Uh, you get some good uh, control over it, you know, it's not too light, but it's not too heavy. Handle's comfortable. I just find this kind of woodworking more enjoyable than other methods. This is going to be the butt of the knife here, and there's much more wood material there, so I'm just uh, shaving down this these corners here to kind of give that a little bit of a taper. All right, so now I got that piece of wood in the in the vise here, and I'm going to start shaping it with this uh, Mora draw knife. They market this as the Mora Classic wood splitter, but uh, basically it's a draw knife. So this is going to be. My first time using this, so let's see let's see how it works. So the Scandinavian grind on the uh, draw knife there takes a real nice edge, uh, so it made it really easy to uh, kind of shape that wood. All right, now we got. Just got switched over to the other side here. Here's where I'm at right now. This is pretty much where it's clamped in the vise, that's why you got that swell. It actually feels pretty good the way that that is working, so theoretically right now it is a uh, usable handle right now, but it is just ugly as sin, but uh, feels pretty good. I'm going to take this over to the axe here and kind of shave down the center bulge, and we'll get back to the draw knife. So you'll notice here I'm trying to keep my fingers above where I'm striking with the uh, hatchet so I try to be very safety conscious with any of my with anything I do pretty much all this knife making stuff uh, 
can be dangerous, so you always got to be thinking about worst case scenarios. I'm using my uh, my Mora number one just to kind of whittle in some fine uh, finer attention to the uh, to the throat of the of the handle. All right, at this point I'm going to cut the tang down because I purposely left it a little bit long. Let's uh, get the cut started. So you can see where the knife tang burns through the wood. And it's not uh, perfectly center. But that's okay, you'll see how I dealt with that here in a little bit. So after carving in the shape that I wanted, I just sort of went through my different grits of sandpaper, sanded it up, smoothed the whole thing out. So for the butt cap of the of the handle here, I'm going to use this piece of copper that I have left over from the uh, pruning shear sacks project. And I just traced that out uh, with a nail, so it kind of scratched the, uh, the shape of it onto the copper. Enough that I can see without risking getting like uh, without risking getting sharpie stains onto the handle itself. So I'm gonna cut this out, and then we are gonna do some final shaping. So I'm using my mill bastard file to neaten up all the hard corners and smooth the whole thing out round out all the edges uh, and so it's just sort of trial and error fit sizing it to the end of the handle then I drill a hole through the center of it I had to offset it a little bit so that it would line up correctly then I squared up the hole with my fine files and that was another trial and error thing fitting that to the tang itself because that needed to slip over to the tang to be a cap for the handle Since the end of the handle is rounded, I had to uh, kind of dish out that copper piece as well to fit it on there. So it took a little extra time, but it ended up fitting on there uh, pretty nicely. And this is some uh, copper wire that I braided together, uh, just as a, uh, I guess, a ferrule of sorts. Here I'm sharpening the knife up on the uh, work sharp. And you can see the uh, brownish gold, a little bit of purple in there from the heat treatment. And then I just glued the whole thing together with my ubiquitous JB Weld. So you can see how that little uh, the copper wire fit into the handle and that uh, applied enough pressure to the inside of the handle that it kind of held it all in place. So that was kind of a test fit. I'm getting uh, my JB Weld all on the tang so that when I slip it onto the uh, slip it into the handle it'll all uh, glue in there nice and snug. Again they didn't tape up my handle so try not to get glue on that. So you can see I drilled a hole through the copper end cap there. And I have a brass pin going through that that kind of helps align the cap onto the handle itself. And I just sort of gave the, the end cap a final uh, polish once it was glued up just to kind of neaten everything up. And it was done. So here's the finished summer solstice knife. I left the uh, heat treat patina on there, that sort of straw brown color. I left that on there uh, just sort of as a test of that as a uh, as a blade finish and the inspiration for that came from uh, an article I read that was talking about how uh, Viking swords might actually be brown because the color of the heat treatment uh, showed that the steel was heat treated properly so it's kind of like a uh, mark of their craft uh, 
the article was discussing the possibility that swordsmiths left that color on there rather than polish it off so it proved to the sword owner that the, uh, the blade was properly heat treated. But I'm really happy with the way this knife turned out. I'm going to actually keep this knife. Uh, this is going to be my woods knife, so I'm going to use it for hiking, deer hunting, uh, camping, that kind of thing. So uh, I'll really be able to test out this coil spring material and uh, see how well it performs and learn more about the steel. Uh, and I'll try and make some videos periodically updating you guys on uh, how it works. It's got a little bit of a blue tint to it from where I was using it to cut up some onions. Uh, I'm not sure, but it kind of seems like the onions uh, removed the, uh, the patina of the heat treatment, but the blue color does look kind of cool on there. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how well that, that blade finish holds up. But again, this is an oak handle. I stained it uh, multiple times with a dark stain and then uh, flaxseed oil. I think it looks real nice. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I like the, the kind of the uh, shape and, and taper of it there with the swell in the middle. It feels really comfortable in hand. This is just kind of a fun, fun knife to hold in your hand. Uh, and I'm excited to get out in the woods and, uh, and use this. So the sheath that I made for it, it's uh, one of my scrap leather uh, finds. It's this really neat, uh, I guess I would call this a, a liver color. This is kind of deep uh, burgundy red, brownish red. Um, and so what I made is a horizontal style uh, belt sheath, which is kind of the Viking style from what I can tell. So they would have worn this uh, on the belt in the front, not in the back, like you see in a lot of movies, but this would be worn on the front. Uh, and just from my experimenting, it is a comfortable way to carry a bigger knife like this so that when you sit down or bend over, it's not getting in the way, hanging up on stuff. So uh, having it there at your waistline uh, really kind of keeps it tight into you. The pouch style sheath really does hold it in secure, uh, but it's easy to pull out when you need to. I really consider this a uh, typical scramasax, which uh, means wounding knife in Old Norse, uh, because it's long enough that uh, you can fight with it. And since there was no guard, uh, I guess historians speculate that it wouldn't be used in a thrust, but I mean, it's long enough that if you were to use it for that type of thing, uh, it would penetrate deep enough to hit vital organs and get the job done. So, but as a slashing knife, I mean, this is about a seven and a half inch long blade. So something this long is definitely gonna be a good slasher. So for a last ditch self-defense knife, it'll, get, it'll be just fine. And then for utility tasks, it'll be great for that as well. Processing food, uh, maybe small woodworking and camp chores. And as far as the blade shape is concerned, it's not something that you really see uh, popularized by people too often as far as a Viking knife. But uh, I found several examples of this, something similar to this kind of long tapering drop point. This type of blade shape I've seen museum photos of from finds in uh, Norway. And so since that was something that I really hadn't seen before, uh, I really wanted to go out and try and make one for myself. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be more Viking.